Hey everyone, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It came, it arrived. I had pre-ordered this from iMusic.co. You know what, I will put the link down in the description box below. Um, but it is an online book music store in Denmark, if I remember correctly. And you can often get the new Scandinavian releases for Hannah Carlson um, and Maria Troll from iMusic earlier. Well, you can get them when they come out. You don't have to wait for the, uh, the English version. Now, I know lots of you like to wait for the English version to come out on Amazon. That's totally fine. I, I just wanted this one. Um, and I'm finding more and more that I like the European paper better than I like the American paper when they come out in, in the English versions. So yeah, this is, and I was trying to avoid pronouncing this or saying this because I know I'm going to say it wrong. It translates to Merry Christmas um, in Swedish. And for those of you that are Swedish, please forgive my pronunciation. I think it would be Gott Jul. Is, is that right? I know that Norwegian the Norwegians say the same thing, but it's pronounced slightly differently. Um, got jul, got go jul, whereas Swedish is more got jul, got, got jul. I'm sorry. I'm probably butchering that. Um, but yeah, it does translate to Merry Christmas. So this is Hannah Carlson's Christmas book. Now, I am a sucker for seasonal coloring books, for... Um, holiday coloring books and so I was really quite excited about this. I'm I'm more and more discovering that I do like coloring in Hannah Carlson. I think once upon a time and I think maybe even a year ago um, when I started my channel I, I talked about how I wasn't really I didn't have a lot of Hannah Carlson books because I wasn't really a fan but I don't know they're growing on me. Now I still don't have them all um, and I don't know that I would go back and, and purchase more, but the Christmas book, definitely. It is on the smaller side, like a lot of her recent books have been. Um, I've got the English version of Tales from the Witch's Cottage here just to show you the difference. It's still thin like that, whereas here this is Seasons, so this is an older book of hers. You can see... Um, that Seasons is, is quite a bit thicker. Well, not quite a bit thicker, a fair amount thicker. In terms of size, let's see if you can see this. So uh, the Witch's Cottage is a tiny bit taller, but also a little bit narrower. So this book is slightly, it's not square shaped, but it's more square shaped than these books have been. It is hardcover. It's got the Swedish there on the back. And let's take a look. So this beautiful red cover with gold foiling. You can see that. This first page is uh, glued to the, to the cover page. So we'll go one more page in before I kind of flatten it out. It is uh, stitch bound, just like all of her books. All right, so here we go. So here's your nameplate page. Now, the one thing that I did notice about this, I'm going to, this is the English version. I'm just trying to compare. This paper is not quite as yellow or, or ivory, I guess as um, this is Tales from the Witch's Cottage. What about Seasons? Yeah, this is more ivory. The print doesn't look as dark here, is what I was trying to look at. In terms of paper, I would say this paper is thinner than, um, now these are two American versions 
of her books that I have here. I also have, this is a Dutch version of Jewelry Box. I would say the color of the paper is, is um, closer here. That paper is quite a bit thicker. And I think one of my viewers had mentioned that, and that's actually why I got these Dutch versions. Um, they're published by MUS, and, or most, I'm not sure how you say that, but uh, yeah, that, that paper is thick. Whereas, oops. Yeah, this paper feels quite thin. So I'd be curious, I don't know if I'm curious enough, maybe. Might be curious enough to buy the Dutch version of this when it comes out, just to see. Um, and lots of those Dutch versions I've bought on Amazon Germany, just because that's the easiest for me. But let's take a look at the images. I'm not, uh, for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, I'm not a fan of coloring faces, but I don't mind something like this where um, the face is, is a small portion of the picture. Hannah will often do those big sort of portrait images and, and I'm, those aren't my thing. I wouldn't color those. But I certainly would color something like this. My mom used to have, I don't know if she still does, it was glass Christmas ornaments for the tree. And this section right here is like indented. So this is a glass ball and then this is indented right here. They were very thin glass. Well, you guys know this sort of thing too, that that center is either flat or indented. So I don't know how many she still has or how many survived, but. Okay, that's. That's two completely different textures. Huh. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, this is smooth. What's this feel like? That feels smooth, smooth. And it's like this side has a, a tooth. So I feel like, yeah, that feels toothier too. Huh. That's very strange. I just noticed it when I went to smooth the page. Huh. Sorry, I seem to be focusing, kind of hyper-focusing on paper, but um, as you guys know, I, I did a, a video uh, probably about a month ago, just talking about, it was an apology video, and then talking about paper. And I think because I tend to color a lot with the, either the, the Stettler um, pigment brush pens or the Faber-Castell pit pens, paper, I think paper can sometimes be more forgiving for pencils because you can always, you know, grab a different pencil set. If, if one set doesn't work, you know, say polychromos doesn't work, you can grab Prismas or you can grab something softer. Whereas because I color so often with these pens, there's kind of really no substitute. <laughs> Although I will say they do function slightly differently. Um, if I've got a less smooth paper, the Stettler pens will will still allow me to move the ink around a bit more than the pit pens. The pit pens really do need a very smooth paper. So yeah, sorry, if I seem to be hyper-focusing on paper, it's, it's because of what I color with, but that is really odd. There is definitely, I mean, I, I don't think I'm imagining this, there is definitely a, a, a texture difference between the front and the back side of that paper, which can happen. I know even, when you buy reams of, or packages of, you know, say cardstock or paper um, that you're gonna put through your printer. Sometimes both sides of the paper are the same, but sometimes they're not. So that's interesting. I love this. I love these images though. They're much more detailed and I love tiny detailed images. So, hmm, I don't know. I hope the pit pens and the Stettler pens do okay on this, uh, this rougher side of the page, I don't know. Yeah, these, I, I would love to do these. And that's smoother again. 
I swear I'm not, I'm not imagining this. It's kind of a fun wallpaper page. Although the candy canes that I normally see are, the stripes are slanted. They're not this way. Maybe that's not true all over the world. I never thought about that. A lot of these images, well, I shouldn't say a lot. We haven't looked at very many yet, have we? Um, I mean, that's that's a winter image. You know, it wouldn't necessarily have to be Christmas. And I like that when you've got Christmas books. Okay, now these are rougher again. That is very strange. <laughs> um, I like winter or Christmas books that have images in them that could just be winter too. It sort of extends the, the Christmas season is so busy. And so, you know, you've got your Christmas coloring, but often I, I'll have ideas in my head of, you know, maybe I want to get certain images colored and you just run out of time because there's so much other stuff going on. So I like it when Christmas books have just winter images too. That's fun. That's pretty. Smoother. <laughs> that again could just be winter. I mean, that could be winter too. I guess you've got kind of baubles and things. Well, yeah, maybe that's more Christmas, but that's, I mean, that's definitely just winter. I like that this is framed with the, uh, like the, the evergreen little branches and, and baubles and things. I like that. That's fun. rougher. It seems to be alternate pages. I don't know why. Like the stockings, the little, I mean, this is very Joanna Basford, right? The, the, the small victories. I mean, she wasn't, it's not like that was the first book to ever have um, small images like that, but that's just the one we kind of think of, right? But I like, I like the little stockings. You can do one, you can do them all. That's pretty. Smoother again. <laughs> like that. The background there would be, you could, you could do a lot with like glowing. Winter image there. Although I, okay, this, this is me being weird <laughs> and I, for those of you that don't know, I'm a, a chemistry teacher. I have a very, a very math science brain. I'm very, very left brained. I'm very, um, I have a lot of trouble with random. I like things that repeat. I like patterns. The fact that this doesn't have, I mean, Snowflakes are six-sided, not eight-sided anyway, but <laughs> these match. These match. No, they don't. They don't. You've got, oh, that's, hmm. <laughs> it's almost, I don't know. This is longer than this, right? Because it would it would go off the page. And these are longer than these. That bothers me. I know it shouldn't, and I please don't think that I'm knocking on on Hannah's beautiful artwork because she's an amazing artist. But the the patterny part of my brain is rebelling against that. It should it should be the same. That's interesting. I wonder why. I wonder why she would do it that way. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, that's cute with the little kitten. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to forgive my voice is a little rough today. It's uh, beginning of September here in Central Canada and the goldenrod <clears throat> is blooming a lot <laughs> outside and it's making my allergies uh, 
go haywire. So, in fact, I might take a little sip of some tea here. Hold on. Yeah. I do love fall, but I don't love the goldenrod. Very sweet. Her animals always have those strange eyes, which I'm not sure what I feel about those, but... This is smoother again. I, and again, I love this one. It's detailed, right? With these ah, little snow cat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Distracted. A little snow cat. And teeny little snowman. I love this one. I love this, this, I mean, this is a huge page and it's a double page spread. Ooh, this might be the first one I do in here. Hmm. Don't know. Yeah, I love, I love the tiny details. It's pretty too. Give me a Christmas tree. You've got the mice and the wolf. Because she plays with uh, perspective and size too. It's still alternating smooth and rough. <laughs> Sorry, I stopped commenting on it because I figured that was probably getting annoying, but it is. Hmm. I had horses up till last fall and we had to say goodbye to them then. So just kind of sentimental. It would be neat to do like a glowing effect there. It's neat that it's uh, framed like that too. It's just more of a, a winter picture. Some birds and a bird feeder. Don't mind coloring people like that. It probably wouldn't be one of the first pictures that I chose to color, but yeah, it's those big portraits that are kind of not my thing. Another kind of small image page there. And trees. So many of you, and I see on... Um, whether it be Instagram or on YouTube, you have such amazing ideas for backgrounds on pages like this. I don't know. I'm a science person. I don't, my imagination just isn't that good, I guess. <laughs> I can't, I can't visualize and picture, you know, ooh, I should do this, it would be neat. Sometimes I'll have, I don't know, ideas that happen to work out really well, but yeah. Aw, under the mistletoe. That's cute. And it is nice how she goes from, you know, pages with less elements and, and simpler, and then you've got the small ones, and then you've got, you know, something like that. It's nice. It's nice how there's there's a variety. Angel. Now it's got 24. Have we got an advent here? Doesn't look like enough. I mean, that's 5, 10, 14, 15. 20. Yeah. I mean, unless you wanted to count, I guess you could count. So if you had 15 windows, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, <laughs> 22. I don't know. You could probably turn it into an advent. Glowing nose. I'm assuming that's Rudolph. Snowman. Hmm. Bundle of candies. Cats and the Christmas lights. <laughs> That's very sweet, though.
Rinse. This is St. Lucia, St. Lucy. Um, it's a figure in Swedish Christmas festivities. December 5th, I think, St. Lucia Day. She sure, has a candle of, of light or, or candle, crown of candles, crown, uh, crown of uh, light. I think, I could be wrong on that, but I think that's who that is. That's very fun. Cup of, uh, I'm assuming hot cocoa with a lot of things in it. <laughs> We've got marshmallows and whipped cream and sprinkles and candy canes and cookies. And there is something about a Christmas goat in Scandinavian Christmas folklore, isn't there? I think there is. Because I think the Christmas, I think the, is it the goat that brings the presents on Christmas Eve? Oh, I could be wrong on that. My mom's family is Swedish, but they came to Canada in the late 1800s. So we've, we, we still have some of the Swedish traditions, like Lutfisk. I do not recommend trying Lutfisk. <laughs> it's not good. Um, my apologies to those of you that might like it. But uh, yeah, we don't, we don't necessarily have them all. That's a lovely page with the owls and the little mice and the presents. I like that. More presents and a squirrel in a wreath. and a basket and some presents and some snowflakes that's fun bird gingerbread house Like this one. You've got the snowflake and then you've got the candles and the baubles above. I just, I like the more detailed pages. Caroling. That could just be wintry. Fluffy cat with a fluffy scarf. Some bells. And we've got Christmas cookies. Is again. See, I probably wouldn't color that. I mean, I know she's she's small. I just am not. Yeah, coloring clothing and faces and things is not not my thing. But you know what? I see there's there's folks that on YouTube that and Instagram that do an absolute beautiful job, beautiful job with that sort of thing. It's almost, it's almost like I'm getting an Eastery vibe here. I don't know, because you've got a, a baby, like a fawn and a bunny, and then these almost look, they're, they're ornaments, but they look like eggs. Huh. Interesting. I like this one. Again, really detailed. The tiny little snowman. Slaying some reindeer. Definitely just wintry. This one too, just kind of wintry. Bringing, this looks like sheaves of wheat or grain or something for the birds and the mice. Cake, Christmas cupcake, another angel, 
It's different than the other angel we saw, right? Mm, now I forget where the other angel was. <laughs> the tree again very detailed pigs is there a folklore with christmas pigs i don't know it's cute though and i think oh oh there is one on the end page here there you go again just very wintry i mean that's just wintry too this could even i mean you know if you're heading out of the winter season you're into february you could use that as a valentine's day page be a very cute Valentine's Day page. And that is it. So that was kind of a chatty flip through of, now I'm going to say this again, I'm going to say it wrong, Got Yule by Hannah Carlson. So Merry Christmas by Hannah Carlson. Uh, yeah, I will try and remember to put a link to the iMusic uh, store where I purchased this. I don't know when it's coming out in English. I, I would guess before Christmas, but I, uh, I don't know for sure. But maybe if you check Hannah's Instagram, she might say something there. Yeah. If you like what you're seeing on my channel, consider liking the channel, subscribing, hitting that notification bell, uh, letting a friend know that you found a channel you like and they might like it too. That's it for today. I hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is well. And I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring. Till next time. Take care. Bye-bye.